Ukrainians reportedly did take control over Svatovy Kriminna Road, which brings them just one step closer towards the liberation of Lysychansk and Severodonetsk and subsequently the entire Luhansk region. And then Ukrainians in the south give Russians one last chance to retreat from Kherson before they initiate the final battle of the south. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage from Ukraine. And our first video comes to us from Nevsky, where we can see Ukrainian soldiers installing their flag in the liberated city. Then we move down to Shakhtyorsk, where reportedly a Russian oil storage was caught on fire. Our next stop brings us to the south of Ukraine, where for the very first time Ukrainian forces were able to intercept a Russian missile missile thanks to civilians using EPPO application on their phones. The interface and the concept of this app is extremely simple, you just have to point your phone on the enemy's aerial object and select which object is this. And as soon as you submit your report, the nearest air defense forces will receive the location of this target on their maps. And if you live in Ukraine, I will leave a download link for this app in the description. All right. And before we talk about Russians recently initiating the nuclear tests, allow me to quickly present you a very ridiculous story from Mariupol. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. I will also have a charitable live stream this Saturday 7 pm Eastern Standard Time and if you want to ask questions in advance, feel free to do it in my Instagram. Ok, here goes nothing. In this picture you can see Russians doing exorcism near Azovstal plant in Mariupol. Or how a Russian media calls it desatanization. Yes, I said it correct. So, according to the Security Council of Russia, there are approximately hundreds of sects and cults in Ukraine. They also mentioned that these beliefs were brought into Ukraine by America. And I mean, who else, right? <laughs> and then it started infiltrating the minds of just regular Ukrainians. And as a result, America turned poor little Ukraine into a hyper sect. And that is why Russia needs to de-Satanize it. Mm, but okay. <laughs> and now as promised, let's very briefly talk about these most recent nuclear tests by Russia. According to this article, today Putin conducted exercises of a massive nuclear strike. But don't don't worry, I still don't believe that Russia will use nuclear weapons. Even the Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shaigu himself, he mentioned that these exercises were in response for the nuclear attack by another country. Which pretty much perfectly matches with my narrative that I was proposing in my previous video, whether Putin will press the button. We even have this video from Russian nuclear submarine called Tula, which does practice launching these missiles. But you know what's suspicious? The quality of video is pretty high, but as soon as they show us this missile, it's like one of these security camera footages. And speaking about this type of missiles, I'm sure you already heard about these Russian threats of using the dirty bomb. Because today we have some new and pretty ridiculous things to talk about. But for those of you who hear about it for the very first time, here is just in several seconds your brief summary. First of all, Sergei Shaigu was calling different countries and saying that oh, Ukraine is going to use this dirty bomb, you know. His almost exact quote is that the Ukrainian government is preparing a provocation on its own territory. And I mean, using this dirty bomb in your own country to target your own population yeah, this does make sense. But ok, Russia then even claimed that the production of this bomb is in its final stage and they even included these pictures. And quickly enough, the government of Slovenia made a statement that these pictures are their own radioactive waste in their storages. After no one took Russian threats seriously, they decided to escalate situation even further. And what it means is that according to the Ministry of Defense of Russia, the four 
forces are on standby for preparation for this dirty attack. The ministry then added that Russia is ready to be blamed for this attack. And couple of days later, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia confirmed that America will be blaming Russia for this event. And I know it all might sound confusing and that it simply does not make sense, but here is uh, basically what it all means. Russia allegedly wants to use this dirty bomb and blame Ukraine for doing it. So they started scaring the world in advance that Ukraine will do it and then they will blame Russia. According to their estimations, when Russia does do it, everyone will think it was Ukraine. And ultimately, when Ukraine blames Russia for doing it, no one will believe them. And pretty much yes, this is your military tactics and preparations by Russia, one one. I recently received several more intercepted calls of Russians, which are translated. And this time they talk about this extremely desperate situation that they are forced to fight in a broken equipment. And if you want to hear the full version of these phone calls, please consider checking my Patreon. The proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all these links down below. Alright, and now let's talk about truly important things. The counteroffensive update from the East and from the South. And first, I know you like this word. Let's go to the south, specifically to Kherson region, where according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continued to establish defensive positions along the eastern bank of Dnipro river. They do it in preparation for Ukrainian counterattacks, but uh, let's be honest, this will not help them and soon you will know why. According to the same report, the major battles of the last 24 hours are happening in Dutchani, Davidov Brit, Snihurivka and Passat Pakroske. And Ukrainians are about to finalize the accumulation of their forces, which means that the next step is a rapid counteroffensive. We then also have this statement by the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Alexei Reznikov, who is basically giving the last chance for Russians to retreat. Because according to him, all the bridges leading to the other side of Dnipro river are under fire control of Ukrainian high Mars. He mostly talks about Antonovsky bridge and bridges in Pridniprovsky and Novokakhovka. And so far, like mentioned previously, these are pretty much the only chances for Russians to cross the river. And as soon as Ukraine does start its counteroffensive, the remaining Russians in this area will have no possibilities to escape. And that is why Alexei Reznikov gives them the last chance to retreat or be at risk of being eliminated or be taken as a prisoner of war. Because unlike in Izum, the retreat will no longer be an option. And now let's briefly talk about the situation in the East. First of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukraine conducted several successful attacks to the west of Svatovy Kriminna Road. Keep this in mind right now, because this will be very important soon. And then the the same report claims that Russians were unsuccessful in their attacks in Donetsk region, specifically next to Bakhmut. This is later confirmed by Zelensky, who is saying that currently there are severe fights next to Bakhmut and Avdiivka. He also stated that Ukrainians were able to retake these territories and now they are holding their ground. And then this map shows us the most recent significant fighting in the last 24 hours. And the locations are next to Lysychansk, next to Bakhmut, Avdiivka and Marinka. But then we have a report that might potentially change everything. If you remember, yesterday several statements were made that Ukrainians were able to get the control over Svatovy Kriminna road. And while this map does not fully reflect these changes yet, we can clearly see that Ukrainians are advancing closer every single day. Because today we have this map which came to us from Twitter of Ukrainian soldier who is currently fighting in Ukraine. And according to this map, Ukrainians were able to push Russians away from this road and now they are contesting Svatovy and Kriminna. And for those of you who are new here, this is one of the main roads for Russians which they use to resupply themselves in Lysychansk and Severodonetsk. And taking the control over this road will mean much easier liberation of 
of these cities. And after this, it gives Ukrainian access to other interesting directions and different cities, including Luhansk. You can access all the maps that I was drawing today for free in our Discord. The link will be down below. And if you want to support my work, please consider becoming my channel member. All the other useful links can be found to my right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi. Don't forget about the live stream on Sunday and see you tomorrow.